Yeah, no problem. I'm happy to be here. I absolutely love this topic, so I'm happy to talk about it with anybody who wants to listen. So um, as Jamie said, my name is Christine Page. I am at SUNY Empire State College. I'm also part of the SUNY Online team with instructional design. Um, this is just our, uh, our standard Empire State College template. I am the Director of Instructional Design at um, SUNY Empire State College. However, I am going to take that hat off and talk to you as an adjunct faculty member for today's session. So I do have a demo set up if you would like to try this as a participant, as a parent or a student in my class. This is, um, I just set this SUNY demo up. You can, um, if you already have Remind on your, um, on your phone already downloaded from the App Store, you can um, add my class by going to, using the code at SUNY demo, or you can also just text at SUNY demo to 81010. I'm gonna have this at the bottom of um, every one of my slides. So at any minute, you know, at any time, if you want to join and take a look at it, you can. At 1.15, there will be, I think it was 1.15 or maybe 1.20, I scheduled a, um, a, an announcement to come out to this group. So you'll see that while I'm presenting to you, Remind is doing some work for me that I don't have to do on the spot. I've set it up ahead of time to send that um, message to you, to my students. So before we kind of get into the nitty gritty of Remind, I do want to kind of explain what it is. So, and, and actually tell you why I use it. I like having that communication option for my students outside of my LMS. And I know that there's some concerns at some campuses about keeping communication within your LMS for um, security reasons and all of that. But I don't make my Remind uh, account or this, this activity any kind of um, requirement. It is not an, it's not um, a graded activity. It's just a way for my students to uh, contact me when I may not be at my computer. If they have a quick question and I can answer it quickly, um, it allows me to do that from my cell phone, which I am always carrying with me, right? Just like our students are. So it's another reason I like to, do, to use this because during the, um, during the day when they're working on things, um, if they have a question, they can send it to me, but they can also send it to my other students. And my other stu my, the other students in the class can answer the questions as well. So um, I'll show a little bit more of how I set it up in my course, but here's the link to um, get it at the um, account set up on your desktop computer, but you can also download the app, obviously, to your mobile device. So here's the um, breakdown of the um, accounts that you can have. I have a free account. It works for me. Um, I don't, uh, I don't ever go anywhere past this. Now, in some cases, you may have more than 150 students. There are ways I, I think you could brainstorm around that. You could open up two classes. And if you have more than 150 students, um, I, you're allowed to have 10 classes at any time. You could, um, there are a few things around this. So if you, if you can't meet the free restrictions, contact me and we can brainstorm and think about um, some ideas so you don't have to pay for this really cool tool. So this is what the web interface looks like. And um, this is one of my um, classes that I'm setting up for the fall. I blocked out the students that have already signed up. Um, so I, um, so right now I open my class on Thursday and already la I've had a few students sign up for this. Like I said, I don't make this a requirement. It is a, a tool that um, helps me connect with my students outside of the LMS. You can see along the left hand side that I have other, um, other classes from previous semesters. I tend to reuse them, so I'm, I never have more than that 10 class restriction um, set up because I don't need, once the class is over, I really don't need to have 
that class anymore. And then you can see at the bottom, I have classes joined. So that's where I'm a parent in the Varsity Swim group. And I get my messages through that, um, that account separately, but all in Remind. So here's how I have this in my class. So I have it right at the intro to my course. I tell my students, here's how you sign up for Remind. Do, um, don't use that course code up there because you'll be in my fall 2020 course and I don't think you wanna be in there. Um, if you want to be, by all means, feel free. And then I also have it in the syllabus. So the way I get my students to utilize this is I offer it as an extra, extra credit. If they are willing to use the app and answer questions that other students may pose in there before I can, I'm gonna award extra credit for that because that's students helping students. If they answer the question and it's not correct, their answer isn't correct, I still give them credit for it, but I make sure to jump in and say, well, actually, here's what you need to do for that assignment. And I just you know, thank the student for trying to answer it, but then that also tells me there's multiple um, issues you know, that, that I need to make the assignment clearer or you know, take a look at it. But it's telling me I have more than one student who is having difficulty. And then I also have this, um, this other kind of way to get my students to use it is I let them know, and I do let them know prior to week four, but I just showed you an example here, that um, for my quizzes, I give them a bonus, not a bonus, I give them a hint during the week before that quiz launches in Remind app only, so that they, um, it makes them want to use it, uh, and then that way they're getting my communication that I'm sending out to them. So those are just some ways I, like I said, I don't, I don't mandate that they use it. I, I highly recommend that they use it. So some of the options that you have, and we're going to, I'm going to dive right into the interface. I'm going to launch it um, at the end after I go through some of this. So we'll see it, um, you know, live and in person, but I wanted to go through some of these settings first. So you do have the ability to allow to, to kind of decide who has access to message and all of that. So by default, when you set up a class, you're going to, um, your students are going to only be able to do, it'll, by default, it's role-based, which means that students can only message students and parents can only message parents. If you, put it on the one that I have it on, all participants in this class can message each other. The role-based is a little bit um, interesting. Um, that one, I believe is, it says students can only message students, but they can also message the teacher. They can message you. Um, but they can see each other and talk and, and ha ask questions of each other. They're not seeing personal information, just the student's name. No telephone numbers are exchanged, none of that. This is a, a nice way to not give away your cell phone number. If you allow students to text you or call you on your cell phone, this protects your phone number because nobody knows it using Remind. You can also turn this off so that your participants can only message you. They're not messaging anybody else in your class. But that would um, not work for me because I give that extra credit if students answer each other's questions. So you have lots of options when you send an announcement or you send a message to the students that have signed up for Remind. Similar to to um, Twitter, you have only 140 characters to do that. So you sometimes have to be very, very, very clever in how you write out your announcement. I've had trouble with that. I sometimes want to talk or, or type a lot of things, but I've learned how to kind of condense so I stay within that 140 restriction. The other thing that's really cool that, um, that they've added more recently is the ability to attach files, you can see from on the right hand side, we'll look at um, when we go live into the um, interface, 
you'll see there are a lot more options for things that you can um, attach. So you can see I can do a video, a photo, um, I can do use Flipgrid if you're using that, Google Drive, OneDrive, all these other things that you can, you can incorporate into your Remind account and pull these files in easy. And you get that all with the free version. You'll see that, um, I think the next slide shows you this. So um, Jamie was talking about that schedule option. So you can see that down at the bottom, I can type a text. So you'll see I have demo message. This is the one I think you're gonna get at like 120 if you signed up for my demo, um, that it's going to send, you, I can schedule this ahead of time. So what I do is before my semester starts, I go in and I schedule messages for all major due dates. So if I know, you know, like on Sundays, my week shuts down. So I will send a message at 1 p.m. on Sunday with a reminder of, don't forget, all your activities for, your, for our class are due today at midnight. If there is um, any other kind of issues going on, our LMS um, goes down because you know what? That never happens, right? But if our LMS were to have um, technical difficulties, I can send a message to the students giving them a heads up. Um, those obviously I wouldn't schedule, but the ones that I am able to schedule, I do that ahead of time. Like I showed on a previous slide about um, the hints for quizzes, I schedule those ahead of time because I don't wanna forget. If I promise them I'm going to send them a hint for one of the questions on the quiz, I wanna make sure I send that because then if I don't, they're not gonna to wanna to use Remind and they're not gonna get my reminders and my announcements and um, it defeats the whole purpose of using this app. So communicating. So here you can see I, um, from my summer class, I had students, you can see all of um, on the left-hand side, this is on my cell phone. So this, I took snapshots from my cell phone. So you can see that, um, the, the various students that had joined my Remind session. And then you can even see one of my students just reaching out to me to say, you know, good evening, I resubmitted my project, it's there, Hope, let me know, you know, thank you for letting me resubmit, let me know. So I probably got that, yep, 6.23 p.m. I was probably not at my computer. So it was nice to know that, oh, okay, she's resubmitted, I can go in and check it. Next time I'm on my computer, I'll make sure to take a look at that. The other thing I do is if a student sends me something and I'm nowhere near a computer, I kind of, I just tell them, I said, thanks for the heads up. I'll take a look as soon as I get to a computer. I'm not stopping everything to do um, whatever it is they need right then and there, if I, obviously if I can't, but it also is letting the student know that I'm there, you know, that, that professor kind of, um, presence in her course that she knows she can contact me and I'm going to get back to her. It may not be right away, but I know that she's got the issue and I'm going to, I'm going to take care of it. So I'm going to launch Remind now and show you in person all of the, oops, wrong key, all of the um, various things. So are you still able to see my screen? I want to make sure I didn't share PowerPoint. Yes, I see okay. your screen. My demo. Okay, awesome. So I see all of you that have joined. This is awesome. So you'll see down here where it says one scheduled announcement. That's the announcement that's going to be sent. Um, let's take a look at it. I can let you know when it's going to go. 120. So at 120, you're going to get that message. I can set up as many upcoming announcements as I want. So if I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna click here, test announcement, press schedule. When I click inside this box, it pops up a calendar. So I can say today, pop in here, and I can, you know, at 4.50 p.m., you're gonna get this announcement. So what I do is I actually look at one of my past semesters and kind of utilize what, I've, what I sent last semester, those key um, ideas and, and reminders, and rep, you know, replicate that from this current semester. So those settings, if we take a look here, 
I always, by default, when you set up a class here, we can actually, let's just create a class. So you can see that from the beginning. You'll see that by default, it creates this class code, which means absolutely nothing. <laughs> um, and it's very like obscure, 8B86HA8. That's very difficult, I think, to remember. But you can go in here and try something else. So I could try CSR, that's not gonna work. Okay, that would work. So I can, I, it will let you keep trying until you find something that works. So I try to keep it um, very short. It only requires three letters, but it, so I try to keep it very short. So it's something easy that my students can, can type into their remind if they already have it or send that quick text code. So I also have, um, I, the um, school I teach for is a college St. Rose. So I make sure that I have the right college because I don't want my students to think um, they have the wrong person when they go in and if they see SUNY Empire State College. So I can hit create. Oop, it took out my class name. Let's go back, test, create. So now I can pop in here and send a file. So just like I showed you, um, let's see, I'm gonna send demo, continue. So I, it brings me right into that same announcement area where I can type my message, but here are your options. So you have, um, from my screenshot, you can see you had OneDrive, then sign up, which I'm not sure what that is, sign up genius, and Survey Monkey. So all of these would connect to accounts if you have them with these different services to allow you to, to attach any kind of file to your students. One thing I remember when my daughter was young, I think she was in kindergarten, and her kindergarten teacher would send us like photos from the day when they were doing like cool things. And I thought as a parent that was awesome because during the day, you know, even if, um, my day, you know, especially when my day was going crappy and I would get that, um, that, that remind message from her class and see a picture of them having fun, it just made my day. So you do have that option to do those photos or videos. I'm just gonna X that out and discard that. People lets you see all the people that signed up for your, um, your class. So I can keep track of who's signing up. And then the settings is where I wanted to show you again what options you have in here. So like I said, by default, it, it does choose role-based for you. I usually turn it to on and allow my students to message everybody. But if, if that's scary to you, leave it as role-based. You could even leave it as they can only message you. Your students can only message you. Totally up to you. I can add another class owner. So if I'm team teaching this with somebody and they have a Remind account, I can add them to this and allow them to also have this control and, and work with the students in here. So down here is where I have the ability to remove a class so that I can keep my under 10 um, restriction down, right? Get rid of the class altogether if I don't need it anymore or even reuse a class code. So that, reuse, that class code were, was that um, code that your students would text or um, use to find your class in the Remind app. So if you create a, a nice short one that's maybe relevant to you, you could keep reusing that all the time, every semester. But just know that your students from the previous semester may try it again. I don't know why they would bother, but I always change it up a little bit. And like I said, I kind of keep mine consistent. If I go into, um, actually, let me go into this semester's, uh, my fall. And I look at, I, I do, I, I, very, I pretty much use this same, you know, I put a for fall F 20 and then CSC, College of St. Rose. I just try to, that, that's, that's my, the way I kind of do it. Um, I can add people if I want, but I don't do that. Um, it does give you that option, but you can, um, if you have a class roster and you want to just add the students in, you can do that. I personally wouldn't do that um, because you want to make sure that students want this. You know, if they don't want to be harassed on their cell phone 
if they want to keep their cell phones separate, I, I would, you know, that's, that's their right. You know, I, I wouldn't do that, but you can do that. If you wanted to add someone, um, another, uh, a TA or something, that's the only way I would use that add people. And then it does require their name, phone or an email address. Okay. I talked really fast and I think I covered everything. You got your message, Jamie. Awesome. <laughs> um, I think I covered everything that I wanted to cover. Um, oh, yep. So it does show that the message went out. So I can take a look and, um, oh, no, it doesn't show yet, but maybe because I am, um, maybe I need to refresh. So I am going to open it. There it goes. So now it's showing up. This is a scheduled message. I am going to, for those of you who are um, watching this on re the, the recorded version of this, I'm going to leave this open, this um, demo course, so you can pop in and, and try it and take a look and um, see the messages. Uh, what's nice is if you don't join this um, like, let's say you join this in two days, you're going to see the messages that were sent out prior, which is kind of cool. So you're not behind. So Christine, I'm glad you finished a little early because you yeah. have quite a few questions in the Q&A. Awesome. Uh, do you have access to that Q&A? Um, I think so. Let me stop sharing. Okay. Okay. All right. Yes, I do. So Pat is asking about how much extra credit do I get? I, <clears throat> excuse me, I um, give, I kind of take a look at the, at the end of the semester and I, um, I look at how much activity they did and try to create an average based on that. So if I have five or, five or six students that were pretty active in answering questions in my discussion board area, as well as in Remind, I, I think I give them like five or six extra points and then kind of go backwards from there. There's no, like, I don't have a set amount, um, but I do make sure my students understand that I don't give um, extra credit unless they have, um, no, that's something different. Yes, that's what I do, sorry. Um, do you suggest setting up with a personal or SUNY email? I have this set up um, with my personal email only because I had this, um, I created my account as a parent first from my daughter's kindergarten class and then saw the potential of this and using it with my own students. So I, um, I never changed my account, but if you don't have an account already, I would suggest using your actual SUNY account, your work email, absolutely. Um, can a student easily message the entire class without clicking on each name? Yes. And they can respond to, so the announcement I posted, they can respond to that and all the students can see that too. There are different options for that when they go to, um, to uh, send a message. Um, do I also send reminders through my LMS or only through Remind? I do send them in both spots. So my LMS, we use Canvas at St. Rose. I am allowed, I, or I do set up a schedule in both spots. So the only thing I'm not setting up in, or set, sending out in the, that, those announcements in my LMS are those quiz, um, those quiz uh, hints because um, I, I push the remind because I, my students are undergrad, low, this is a low level course. So I'm dealing with those traditional 18, 19, 20 year old students. And they always have, they're, they're the ones that have their cell phone with them all the time. So I'm trying to get them on the device that they're always using, that they always have with them. So that's why I wanna make sure that they're seeing those reminders. When I tried this with a class that I teach at Empire, which our average student age is, um, you know, in the 40s to 50s, um, it doesn't. This 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 app does not work. Those 
those, um, that demographic does not, um, they're not utilizing their cell phone the way our um, freshman, sophomore students are. So I, um, I don't use it with um, my students at Empire. I do try it every once in a while just to see, but typically they're already watching the LMS and, and taking, you know, doing whatever they need to do with just those reminders from the LMS sending those scheduled announcements. Um, when a student sends you a message, do all the other students see it or do they have an option to only send the message to you? Uh, correct. The student can send it to the whole class or they can send it to just me. Most of, my, most of the time my students are sending it to just me. Sorry, Eric um, is asking about require approval to join. Do I enable that? I don't. Um, I have never had a problem with non-students joining. Never. Um, you're able to with like pull people out, kick people out of your class if you want. So if I did have someone join and they were being um, disrespectful or disruptive, I could remove them from my class roster. But I have never done um, appro approval to join. Um, role based in everyone. So I am not 100% sure either, Pat, because the way they have role based written um, in the app makes it sound like um, student to student. I don't think they have the ability with role based to send to the whole class. I think that's the only difference. I'm going to have to test it out a little bit more. Um, I just noticed it the other day. It used to not be, they used to have it written a different way. Jamie, do you know, have you ever played with that setting? Uh, no, I, I have used it the, in the most basic of fashions. So <laughs> okay. I don't know the answer to that question. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure, Pat, but that would be one, um, you know, I'm going to play with that. I'm going to test it out a little bit and see, uh, see what the difference actually is. It used to only have two options. So they've added this third and it's new to me this week. I noticed it. Um, are there downsides to, downsides to using this app? Um, I have not, personally, I've not had a downside to it. Um, the only time it was um, it, when I used it with the Empire students and they, there was no activity in it. Um, I didn't even have, they didn't even sign up for it. So I guess that's a downside if you don't have anybody who wants to do it. Um, that's why I kind of make it a little, I sweeten the pot a little bit and I try to um, coax them into using it. So um, I, I have not. Um, I don't know if there's anybody else that's using it that um, has, has encountered any, any downside to it. Um, I think the one thing that um, I guess I wish didn't happen is when my students send a message or I have one of my scheduled messages goes out, I get the message as well. And I get it in the app and I also get it as a text message. So as those things were happening um, while I was presenting, my watch, which is connected to my phone, was um, vibrating because as you were joining, I think I was getting notified. As um, my message went out, it notified me. But it also, it's, only, it's not only notifying me once, it's notifying me twice because it sends it as a text message as well as in the Remind app. Does that make sense? I don't know if I explained that. I just wish it would could go to one place. And maybe there is a way and I just haven't played around with it. Because I guess it doesn't bother me that much that I'm willing to put in the time to figure out if I can have it in just one or the other, either as a text message or just in the Remind app. But I guess that would be my only downside. Is there anybody else that has, has encountered any downsides to it? I have gone back and forth. Um, I've used GroupMe. I know I mentioned that in the beginning. Um, what I, what I, why I switched to Remind from GroupMe is GroupMe didn't allow the um, ability to schedule ahead of time. I really like that. And maybe they do now. I haven't 
I haven't gotten um, mad at Remind to go back and look at another tool that does this. So um, I, I really like Remind. I love the ability to schedule ahead of time. Yes, Julie, the character limits, I do kind of agree that is a downside because sometimes you have to be very clever at um, making sure you're, what you're saying is short. Um, and in those instances, I have sent two announcements. You know, I've used the 140 up and then I send a second announcement right after it with um, the additional text that I want to send. Usual so, errors that I don't want to interrupt. I'm so sorry, but it is 1.30. Okay. And I just want to make sure that for people who are joining and expecting to have the uh, us sharing the teaching technology tools, I just wanted to say that we're just finishing up with our our session that started at uh, one o'clock today. Um, so Christine, if you wouldn't mind after we finish up here, uh, going through the remainder of these 10 open questions and, and typing the answer, if you could, yeah. that would be really helpful. I just wanna thank you for volunteering your expertise with Remind and, and sharing this app with everybody. Sure, no problem. I will um, start typing my answers. Thanks, Christine.